What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at Insurance Auto Auctions for another walk around. Let's jump into this video today and see what we find. How about a 99 Toyota 4Runner that's from Pedal? It's listed as a non-runner and it has a service tag in the window, which just has me a tad bit curious. It's got matching Michelin tires with good tread. The clear coat is peeling off of, well, a good portion of this. It's a limited trim model. This should be fully loaded with leather and the works, man. It's got a tow hitch on the back. This thing is pretty nice. Let's go around to the other side and see what it looks like over there. This is gonna be one of those that is probably not available to the public. Yeah, this is, this is, this is not bad, guys. A lot of the pedal and charity car, uh-oh. Uh, cars for some reason are not open to public bidding. I don't. I don't understand. There's got to be some type of legality surrounding that, um, but they're only for dealers, which leaves them wide open to me <laughs> to get them at a much better deal. Because if all of these things were open to public bidders, I'd be fighting against everybody for stuff like this. And let's be real: how many dealers are looking for something like this? You know what I mean? Like none. No dealers are going out going, yeah, I really want to find some, you know, 20, 30 year old car and uh, put it on my lot. Me, on the other hand, I just love playing with these things. That's what it is for me. I, I enjoy playing with them, seeing if I can get them running, figuring out what's wrong with them. That's where I have a lot of fun. Interior's a, you know, a tad bit rough, but it's not too bad. Let's take a look under the hood here and see what they got going on. I do know that this is a timing belt motor. And that is a little concerning. That could very well be exactly what's wrong with this one. It's a bad timing belt. But you don't know until you try, man. I can't tell you how many times I've come out here and looked at a, a car, truck, whatever, that says it doesn't run, and it actually runs. <laughs> and it's like, all right, well, these people that didn't come out here and look at it, they don't know. Uh-oh. Do you see that? Somebody's been in the timing belt. Yeah, I already know. I knew before I even opened the hood on this one. I already know. I'm going to give it a shot. I'm, I'm willing to give it a chance, but the, <laughs> this confirms everything. Somebody had, you can see they had the uh, clamp off of this hose. So they pulled this hose out and they took this top cover of the timing belt off. And now it's sitting here for sale. So 99.9%. Uh, .9%. This thing's got a blown timing belt. It's probably an interference motor, which means you're going to have valve damage and potentially piston damage as well. All right, we got the GB150 hooked up. We're just going to confirm my suspicion here real quick. Oh, 291,000 miles on the odometer. Locked up. Well, there you go. <laughs> we made short work of this one, didn't we? Yeah, that ain't good. That ain't good. I'd almost be willing to bet that this thing popped the timing belt while it was on the road. The valves crashed into the pistons and now the motor is frozen up on it. So this is one I wouldn't want to mess with guys, especially with this kind of miles on it. So we'll just close the hood and we will move along to the next one. Here we got another pedal car. This is a, a 2001 Chevy Silverado and it looks like it's in pretty rough shape. This one's obviously been sitting for a long time. A lot of damage to the front bumper, to the hood, to the paint. This is pretty rough. I wanted to look at it anyway. Uh, yeah, wow. Yeah, this is this is in pretty bad shape. It doesn't hurt to check them out though, guys. Like I, I love trucks. I love these old Chevys because this is before they went with all that uh, displacement on the man after active fuel management and all the crap that really just turned these things into ticking time bombs. I've always loved my Chevys and GMs, always. Uh, and to an extent, I still do. I just, I can't bring myself to spend the money on one of these newer Denali's or one of these newer Chevy GM pickup trucks knowing that it doesn't matter if I get a 5.3 or a 6.2, it's got, even the 6.0, you know, they have active fuel management and at random, they will pop lifters and destroy cams and eventually destroy the entire engine. I can't, I just can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. I don't remember what year exactly um, DOD started. So that's a problem. I should probably look that up and memorize it. But I'm fairly certain this does not have displacement on demand. 
this one's pretty rough i don't <laughs> i don't expect this is gonna run oh wow wow this is a four three so this wouldn't even work for me anyway um look at that look at that all the way down good lord battery is from uh 2019 so i mean that's not that long ago four years that's long enough for critters to get in here though and tear things up make a mess of everything yeah you know if this was a 5.7 that'd be a different story i'd still consider it even with the body damage you know whatever it's got super clean oil though don't do it randy you, there is no use for a 4.3 it's rough it's real rough but you know what something about it i just what how much is it gonna go for really you know it, it is pretty rough and look at the look at the buildup on this thing it's pretty bad but it does have good tread on the tires the 4.3 some of you get mad at me when i say i wouldn't buy a 4.3 for doing towing and stuff i've had plenty of 4.3s and i towed with them and they'll absolutely tow the problem is they struggle especially when you have to get going from a dig or if you got to go up hills and stuff it really struggles and the transmission ends up shifting constantly up and down up and down up and down even with overdrive off so i feel like you're just putting too big of a strain on a v6 truck like this trying to make it work regularly now occasionally you know very rarely not too long a distances sure man they'll do it all day long I just wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't push my luck with something like this. Yeah, look, at, oh, wow. I've smelled worse. Well, that doesn't say much, does it? <laughs> Never mind. I'm talking about gasoline, guys. I'm talking about gasoline. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and throw a jump on it. Hell, we'll see if it cranks over, if it's willing to do anything. I, I don't know, man. She's very, very rough, but you know, it could make a good project for old Monkey Wrench Mike. I heard some noises, so I mean, it's got some electricals. Yeah, it's got some electricals coming to life in here, doesn't it? It's a uh, aftermarket stereo. That's nice. Fuel? None. Oh, you gotta do the GM wiggle. It's got the GM wiggle. These things were so notorious for the ignition problems. And uh, we'll put the ground over here. I think that's where they wanted it anyway. Let's sit it right here. Let's try it again. I mean, I'd be happy just to hear it crank. I know it's not gonna run, but thank you. We don't need that. <laughs> Hiccups. Manual windows manual locks i mean this thing's got absolutely nothing for options here i'm trying to get a good bite on this ground and it's just it's giving me all kinds of problems i'm not going to spend much more time messing with this truck truthfully it's it's not worth it i was thinking this could be something for monkey wrench mike man it really could but it cranks it does, it cranks. I mean, I know there's no fuel pressure. Fuel pump is dead, so is the sending unit. That's all I needed. That's really all I needed. Here's a uh, an oil change sticker. Let's see what this says. 2016, 187,000 miles, and it's got 188,000 miles on it now. So this thing has probably, probably been sitting somewhere around january 2016 february 2016 somebody must have thrown a battery in it later on to try to get it going or something but sitting since 2016 that makes a lot more sense a lot more things add up when you look back to 2016 on it it could make a good truck it could i think it'd be perfect for what he's looking for um i don't know if he's wanting another project at the moment <laughs> probably not but every time i see an old truck I think about Monkey Wrench Mike, and I'm like, man, he needs a truck. He needs a truck. But it seems like every time I give him a project truck, it turns out to be a little bit more than what he's wanting to deal with. And I don't blame him at all for it, but it just seems like 
one thing after another after another. I don't know if he wants another present for me. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the furry bush. Or does that say the hairy bush? I, I really don't know. I, I'm not sure what it used to say because somebody clearly covered it all up. But uh, it looks like it maybe said hairy bush, furry bush. Somebody tried real hard to paint over it. Um, oh my goodness. This is Cherry Bomb. Anybody remember Cherry Bomb? Not the song. The sticker is for the Cherry Bomb exhaust from back in the day. Oh wow. Th this is... This is so bad. <laughs> I don't even... I don't even know what happened to this car. Is this vandalism? Uh, <laughs> or did somebody like intentionally do this? What does this say? It says Northwest 10th Street, Oklahoma City. It's got an address on it, but it doesn't really say what this is for. They even went in on the jams, man. I mean, they went all in on this. Um, surprisingly, it doesn't smell bad. The whole stereo, air conditioner vents, all that stuff is ripped out and missing. Uh, no door handle on the back. That's pretty common. You can, a lot of times there's a nub here. You can get your finger under and, uh, that's going to cut me. So I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not, I'm not interested in this car at all guys. Zero. But I thought I'd show it to you because it's, it's kind of unique. You know what I mean? This is definitely not something you see every day. This is a car donation foundation vehicle. So you know, it was donated. It's listed as a non-runner with like 232,776 miles. This, is, this, I dare you. I dare you to buy it, get it running, and drive around in this. I would love to see pictures or video of somebody actually rolling around in this car. How about another legitimate police car, guys? Oh, I love these. I do. You got the lights in the front, but it's missing the, what do they call it? The bull bar, the brush bar, whatever. It's missing that. Well, hello. Don't bite me. I think those things bite. Fireflies, I think they can bite you. Pretty good looking vehicle, except for the back. It took a nasty hit in the back. Putnam City Schools Police, no kidding. I didn't know that the school had their own police. Protecting the future, I like that. Ooh, man. That's, dad, that's a nasty hit. That's a real nasty hit. I'll tell you this, I would not want to be the person that rear-ended the police. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Could you, this is a big truck, guys. It folded the whole back end in. I mean, you got ripples all the way through the door. The back door is crunched into the front door. There's no gap anymore. Look at, look at the difference here. Look at the gap and overlap. This, <laughs> uh, no, I sure wouldn't want to be the guy or gal that smacked into this police car. Not one bit. <laughs> I'm curious what kind of goodies it has on the inside, though. Obviously, I don't see any lights on the top. Looks like they took the antenna. Uh, let's see if we can get in here just a, just a little bit. Oh, yeah. They took everything out, didn't they? Just a bunch of wires. That's all that's left, whole bunch of wires. So it looks like it's a canine unit, maybe? No, it's not. I thought maybe there was a dedicated canine spot back there, but I guess it would have said canine unit on it, wouldn't it? Wow, man. Okay. Well, I had to stop and see you guys. Every time I see a police car now, I, I just, I gotta stop and look at it because I'm kinda on this police car kick and I want more. But next, I would really love to find an explorer. Here's another one that I'm really confused about. You guys kind of went crazy in the comments over this Camaro. I don't even remember which video it was in, but so many of you got a hold of me and you were asking me to please start the Camaro. Guys, I don't think she starts, okay? I'm being honest with you. I don't think she starts, but when I see that many comments and I'm able to get back to the car and it's still here, which it is, 95 Camaro V6, ugh, but a lot of you said, screw it, it doesn't matter if it's a V6 or not, it's still a great looking old Camaro. I guess some of you are just as crazy as I am because I agree with you. I agree. I just don't want to say it on camera because people think I'm nuts. This is not a good looking car 
to most people, guys. This is, most people see this and they see junk. I see it and I see, well, it may not have been the best of American auto manufacturing, but it, 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 it's a good old car, man. It's a good old car. I'm certain this doesn't run. I'm 100% certain this doesn't run. Do you know how much these things, not a V6, but the V8s, the old LT1s are worth? Guys, I've been looking for one for months. I've been, I want to bring one to the channel, not a V6, obviously, but the V8s, convertible, I don't care if it's a convertible or a coupe, doesn't matter to me. Just want an LT1, not, not cheap. Not cheap. The cheapest one I was able to find was $7,000. It's got like over 100,000 miles on it. It's a little rough. It's got a leak from the intake manifold. And you ever work on an LT1? You ever pull the intake manifold off of one? It's, you know, I mean, not the end of the world, but I'm here to tell you, I've done it. <laughs> I've done it. And it's not fun. It is absolutely not fun pulling the intake off of an LT1 engine. It's not fun doing the OptiSpark either. Those are never any fun. So the problem is with these is the engines are pushed so far back under the cowl that it just makes working on it that much harder. A Corvette would be a lot easier than working on something like this. These, these are just really, really a PITA with that cowling covering up like a third of the motor. We'll go ahead and we'll see if this does anything. Like I said, this thing looks like it's been parked for a very, very, very long time. So I do not expect it to do much it might crank but this is not going to start guys but for you because you asked so many of you just had to see this car we'll give it a try but don't get your hopes up even though secretly oh i'm getting my hopes up a little bit i don't hear a fuel pump are you sh really it runs Come on, man. I don't need this. The power steering works. The brakes work. Backwards, yes. Forward, yes. You're kidding me. Really? Power windows, slow, but they work. No joke, man. Oh, this is such a hoopty. If the AC comes on, I, th we we got a we got a bid on it. It's just it's in such bad shape. The AC is ice cold. I'm not even joking you. The air conditioning. I am so glad you guys told me to come back and check this out. You think the top works? I don't even know. There we go. Let's let's just give it a little try. I'll be. Are you kidding me? Yes, the top. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's still a total crap box of a car, right? But it's got cold air. The convertible top works. Oh oh oh! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oil pressure says none. Check gauges. Hold on. Let's turn that AC off. Let me give it just a tad bit of throttle. And I know you guys are going to be like, oh my god, I can't believe you're doing it. I just want to hear if we got any knocking. No, we don't. I don't believe that it has no oil pressure. I do not turn on that air conditioning again. Guys, I didn't expect this. Truly, I didn't. This car looks so rough. I mean, it, 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 it's... Listen to that exhaust, though. Fuel pump's a little louder than I'd like it to be. It's definitely scraped up down the side. This could be fixed, but I mean, how much are we going to spend on this? You know? I mean, the paint job alone isn't going to be cheap. It's a V6, but if you got that damage fixed and you threw a fresh paint job on this, this wouldn't be half bad. This really wouldn't be half bad. I can't believe this. I absolutely knew that this thing was not going to run. Charitable adult ride. Oh, it says run and drive right on it. Engine starts with a check mark. Keys with a check mark. I missed it. 
it gets so hot out here, guys. I guess I get in a rush sometimes because I just want to get back into some air conditioning, you know? Wow. Okay, you were right. You were right. I was wrong. Um, sucks that it shows no oil pressure. But at the same time, I'll bet you it's an oil pressure sending unit. I'll bet you that's all it is. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's got a big dent right here, too. I mean, there's... I don't know, guys. It would... I think it would take an awful lot to bring this car back. Tell me the headlights work. Let me find... Let me find out the headlights and everything work on this too, right? I'll be damned. <laughs> Look at that. Well, okay. Um, does the power seat work? Yes, it does. Everything. Everything on this Coral car works. I mean, I know the battery's shot, but Wow, I'm, I am absolutely blown away. These things were notorious for uh, intake plenum failure, head gasket failure. Just take a quick peek at the oil. Looks good. It's pretty clean. Now, I, I don't have anything to wipe it off with, so I can't check the level, but I mean, the oil itself looks really good. It looks healthy. Trans fluid. Can you even say trans fluid anymore? <laughs> you get canceled for saying that nowadays. Trans fluid is a, uh, you know, it's in a condition where I'd say it probably needs to be serviced soon. It's not burnt. It's not like dark brown or black or anything. It's still got a red tint to it, so. Oh goodness, guys. What are we gonna do? So this is very interesting, guys. I've got the app pulled up right here. Probably be kind of hard for you guys to see with the with the sun. Let me see if I can get you guys out of the sun a little bit. I don't know if that helps any, but this is listed as a non-runner. The uh, buy it now price is two hundred and twenty-five dollars. Two hundred and twenty-five dollars, and it says it's stationary, undercarriage damage non-runner inoperable digital dash wow i don't know man 225 bucks i could buy this now for 225 dollars and we could find out if it runs and dries i'm going to be honest with you though i i don't know that i want to spend the kind of money on it it's going to need to be spent you know, for paint and everything. I, even even with the discount I get over there at Mako, the body damage, you know, you're looking at a battery, call it $100 for a battery, probably six, $700, maybe a little more because of this damage, you know, maybe $1,000 to fix up this damage. So let's say $1,000 to get it painted and have the paint looking good again. Um, After fees, you're talking about what, 500 bucks, $500? So you'll have 15, 16-ish, and that's just nothing else other than getting some paint, some body work, and a battery. We don't even know if the transmission's any good. How much is this car worth with a V6? You know, like how much is this thing actually going to bring? I don't know. I'm really torn on this one. The price is insane. The price is insane. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I've learned this from experience. There is nothing cheaper. No, I'm sorry. There is nothing more expensive than a cheap car. Used to, that was reserved for European car. Oh, 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 oh. What is this? What is this? Oh, it's losing oil. It's losing oil. Well, dang. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, uh, 225 bucks, it's a good deal. I'm guessing it's got a hole in the oil pan. It runs great, um, but that's something else to add to the list. You know, that's something else that's gonna have to be addressed on this car is, the oil pan or could it be a rear main seal leak it sure could be again it's great that you can find cheap cars 
that's wonderful, but I've learned from experience that there really is nothing more expensive than a cheap car, and it doesn't matter what kind of car it is. The cheaper they are, the more expensive they tend to be in the long run. We could make an entire video, I think, about the pedal and charitable donation vehicles out here. This is a 2005 Chevy Silverado. It's a Silverado, I know, I'm just messing with you. It's a nice little single cab, 1500 half ton pickup truck. Looks good, except for this fake air vent. I don't know why you would need that, but man, what a nice little single cab. This is probably gonna be a V6. You've got a Stormtrooper, K&N, St. Leo University. You got locks on the, uh, I wonder if there's something in there. That could be fun. Cut, the, I've got bolt cutters, you know, cut the locks off. Find out what's inside of it, probably nothing. Tires, they need to be replaced, but the body looks really good. Let's check out the interior. Very, yeah, very basic, nothing fancy. Looks like it had a CB radio in it at one time. You can see the, uh, the antenna on the back. Can we lift this up a little bit, see if there's anything back here? Nah, there's nothing back there. Looks like it's dead as a doornail. They took the CB radio out. It's a work truck. It's got the work truck floor, and I'm a big fan of that uh, the carpetless interior. I love having the plastic floors. You don't have to worry about spilling stuff. You don't worry. You don't have to worry about messes at all. No worries at all about any of that stuff because you can just vacuum it right up. It's got a DVD player with a remote control and a USB auxiliary. Very nice. No key fob. It's got manual locks, manual windows. I'm telling you, it's going to be a 4.3. It's going to be a V6. And I've also told you I got no problems with V6s at all. For light duty work, they'll do it. They'll do it. Just, I wouldn't make it a habit of using them for, for heavy lifting stuff. It's just not what they were made for. Yeah, V6. Again, not a, not a big deal. I'm not hating on the 4.3. I know there's a lot of people out there that love their 4.3s. I'm not hating on it. I'm simply stating a fact. These were not made to do like heavy duty hauling work all the time. Ooh, that's gross. Yeah, that's, I'm not even sure if there's coolant in it at this point. Let's check the trans fluid, just because I'm curious. It appears to have quite a bit of trans fluid in it. I mean, it's not running, so I don't know. <laughs> but that looks like, uh, boy, that looks like a lot. It looks good though, from what I can tell, the trans fluid looks relatively decent. Let's see if I can get this back in the hole without, there we go, look at that. I'm talented, man. Let's check the oil. These things are kind of notorious for popping head gaskets. Oh, that's a lot of oil. That's, uh, that's a lot of oil, isn't it? Huh. All right. Well, now I'm even more confused. It's got a lot of transmission fluid, a lot of oil. There's definitely a possibility that somebody had this thing running just a little bit ago. You know, maybe they just started it, shut it off, and... And that's what it is. Let's put a jump pack on this real quick because we already know it's dead as a doornail. And let's see if it'll do anything. Now, I've got it hooked up to the proper jump points and ground. And, and I promise you, we're going to turn it over. It's going to click. We're going to have to get out three times. And we're going to have to fight with it because this is just how it goes every time. Oh. Wait, come on. Nah, no, see? I told you every single time man i i don't know what the deal is <laughs> this is just just the way it goes it's always this ground man it's always this ground and it's not the booster pack it's just i don't know get on there stick to it quit messing around man i don't have time for all these games you know what i mean i feel like we're just playing games here stay and we don't want that popping off and getting caught up in the belt, do we? Let's try it again. I think GM's factory grounding point sucks. Are you kidding me? Let's try it on the battery this time. I'm, I get so frustrated with, with trying to get the ground right on these, man. I really do. <laughs> You're killing me. Twelfth time is the charm, right? Oh. It says it runs and drives. No, it doesn't. <laughs> All of that for nothing. All of that for nothing. Are you kidding me? Locked up. 
it locked up. <laughs> that was a waste of time. Well, that's how it goes sometimes, guys. That's the that's the reality of these auctions, man. I don't know. It's got overfilled transmission fluid, overfilled oil. I mean, here's the other side of it, though. It's a 4.3 liter V6. These things are a dime a dozen at the junkyard. I mean, really, you could you can get one of these for like 800 bucks. It's not a big deal uh, to swap an engine. It's a two-wheel drive truck. There's nothing complicated about it. Just pull out the old 4.3, slap in a new 4.3 down the road you go. I'm gonna put it on my list, although quite honestly, I don't really feel like I got time to be changing motors right now. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna end this video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and let me know. Definitely drop your comments below and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.